Mamma mia, it's the time for the Superboy S. Bring your Nintendo games on the go. Let's go! <laughs> Welcome! It's cool that you're still watching! We're going to take a close look at Hyperkin Superboy. So Superboy is like a device that... Seriously, like, I need to stop doing that. <clears throat> so let's get rid of this freaking hand gloves. So this is this device, actually, that can play your games on the go. So I didn't review any of these devices, but I was really curious about it. There are a couple of different versions. Maybe I will check out here on the channel. I picked it up from a fellow collector, like, in here in my country. Because these things are difficult to find in this version. Because, the yeah, the latest version having, like, different colors whatsoever. But what you can do, actually, is bring your Super Nintendo games on the go. Yeah, this device is absolutely, like, bulky. And yeah, it comes even with a nice sleeve, a little bit filthy, but it doesn't matter. So this thing is like a Super NES on the go. They are using like the colors of, I think that was the US version, but we do have like a 201. You can use it like a Super NES, like plug it in your television. But I did already like review a couple of these devices, but not from Hyperkin. Hyperkin is a company that I did like a see and read a lot about it, but I never got my hand on these things. And I just wanted to see what it is. I already mentioned like this thing is quite beefy and the d-pad I'm just going to be honest I am not the biggest fan of it. like the way how it looks like the curve that is with this thing I must say that this is super comfortable to play but the click you can even like hear it it's just like ooh, like really bad in my opinion okay I do have like the shoulder buttons the shoulder buttons have been placed fairly well so you can reach them super easy like with an original Super NES controller the A, B, X and Y buttons they feel also very nice they feel way better than the d-pad but what I also like that they have made the decision to give it like different height. So let's show you over here. If the camera wants to focus. But I have like two different, like with the hollow buttons and more like the other versions you have like the controller. Over here we have like a headphone jack out, volume control, brightness control. In here we will find the battery and of course the cartridge slot. And it will support FX, like have every single pin, like original Super NES. We're going to try it a couple of games. On off switch over here, reset. We have the switch between PAL and NTSC. And of course the micro USB for charging. And not to forget, we also go to get some cables. Let's see if we can get them out. Hello, are we getting them out? Yeah, there we go. So let's see what we're going to get with this used one. Ah, there we have. That's convenient. We're going to get like the strap that is around the cable. And that's something yeah, you should like implement on your handheld if you accidentally drop it. And then having like the old school AV out with a tiny jack connection. So let's all uh, test it out because I am excited. But let's do the ultimate test. Let's test I think everything where we can think of, like multi-game cards, every drives, or like multi-game or flash cards. But let's start with the Super Mario Kart. It's going to check out the Paul version. So we're going to set it to Paul. Then we're going to plug it in. I'm gonna say like it fits in perfectly, but not too tight. So they did an amazing job with that. Let's turn it on and let's see if it's going to be booting up. There we go. Okay, so the first thing I've noticed the audio quality. It's quite good. It's not super bad, super good. It's good. The only thing is like, we do have like widescreen nightmare. So I wish like the edit and button to that to just change it out. Also, when you're looking at the viewing angle, oh boy, this is some old school technology. I wish it like give you like an IPS display or give you an option to upgrade this. You do have a brightness button, so let's mess with this. You can see like you can basically have like in different levels, four of the levels. And uh, it makes it so much better. All right, so let's play a little bit of a game to see how it actually works because, yeah, it's a DSP1 chip if I'm saying it correctly. Some of the clone system can be completely messed up when playing this. Also, the audio is good enough to really enjoy. Yeah, and again, like the D pad, it's not super bad when you're actually playing with this game, but you can just feel that annoying click. Okay, so actually when it comes to Super Mario Kart, that works very well. Now we're talking about Super Mario Kart. Let's just try the Japanese version. Okay, let's go put it back to the NTSC version. So I'm actually saying like Japanese or whatever. So let's switch it to that. Let's see if you want the booting up. If it's going to be booting up. It doesn't really boot up. You know what you need to do. You need to blow it. Yeah, because that's so good for your cartridges. <laughs> Oh. See, but it seems to be working. <laughs> I 
All right, so let's give it another try. I'm always jumping in this game. I don't know why. I love doing that. Here we go. But when you can see, it works perfectly, and also with a different region. But they should do something with the widescreen, you know, like. Nevertheless, when you're looking at the Game Boy or Super Game Boy, it works like a charm without any problem. So also there we have like a support. As a child, I played this game so much, and I still enjoy the soundtracks nowadays. Next up, let's try a US game. And that is something I really love about this thing. It can play, actually play everything. Oh crap, I chose accidentally the freaking two player. Yeah, the two player option. No. Yeah, I'm not going to try that. I need to implement like an extra controller, but I don't want to do that. No. All right, so let's try out the D-pad. <laughs> I'm not expecting anything from this. All right. You need to do a little bit more effort to get the moves out, but the D-pad does, does support finding games very well. Next up, let's try a flash card. And here you will see it will boot up without any problem whatsoever. Okay, so let's try a Star Fox game or Star Wing. I'm not saying Star Wars, Star Wing. By the way, no problem whatsoever. There's one thing you need to take consideration that is you don't need to forget to swap out, let's say, the button over here. If you don't do this, you will have like some screen tearing or some weird stuff going on, I've noticed. So you need to be very careful. But so far, no problem. Another thing I really like about it is that we can just plug it into our television and just actually play this way. Plug in a controller and you just have like yourself like a portable Super NES or just make it a console. And that is a feature I personally really like about this device. But I do notice like the signal of course is a little bit washed out when it comes to the colors and that's due to just using like the highest quality signal output. A little bit of bummer. In my opinion this should like upgrade it to HDMI functionality. The Hyperkin Superboy S. I must say that I do really like this handheld for what it is. It feels a little bit outdated simply because when you're looking at, let's say, the display itself, it should be like at least have an IPS display. I'm hoping in the future they will implement this. Also, yeah, the AV out, come on, man. Like, who uses AV out nowadays for like a $15 handheld? It is not a big of a deal, like from China. But for a Superboy Hyperkin Super NES, it would be cool to have like beautiful RGB signal out and with HDMI. That would be freaking epic. And also, yes ratio is a little bit of a bummer in my opinion i want to thank you for watching consider subscribing let me know what you think of the hyperkin and it would be great to see you in the next video